What's up, everybody? So today we are going to make a ladder. Uh, you can use this ladder for whatever it is that you want, but what I like, well, actually, I don't like this very much, to be honest with you. I particularly uh, used to hate making the ladders for the lofts, for the bunk beds. Uh, in the tiny houses, we have a lot of ladders. When I first started building tiny houses, I can tell you right now, ladders were the most annoying, frustrating thing that I've ever had to teach myself how to do. You know, nobody told me that I'd be building a, a, a lot of ladders when I <laughs> started building tiny houses. However, I've, over the years, become quite, uh, quite the crafty little little, well, I've become cr quite the crafty uh, individual, how's that, uh, person to build these ladders. So I'm gonna go through how I build a ladder. And uh, one of the things I like to do is I like to put these notches in here. And this can be really challenging, especially if you're using a chisel and a saw and, you know, a screwdriver and a hammer. That's uh, not recommended. I particularly like to use a router and make a jig. Uh, first thing you gotta do is you gotta determine what your angle is. So I figured that already out. And what I did was I leaned bottom of the lad or bottom of the piece of wood uh, against wherever the top area is that you gotta get to. In this case, I'm making a bunk bed set. What you have here, if you can see this, is a pivot point. So you put this on the floor, right? Then you got your piece of material. In this case, I'm gonna grab a random piece of packaging to show you this. See how, right here? So if you go this way, then you minus from 90. So if, it's, if it ends up where the outside of your area of your ladder is gonna be at 80, then you minus 90, it's a 10 degree angle. You can also go this way. A little more tricky to do it this way. In fact, I don't recommend this way. Just minus from 90, it's pretty simple. In this case, I'm making it a five degree. It's probably the easiest way to show you this. You're not gonna be able to see it too good, but if I rack this up like this, these are at a 45. However, if I put, see, you're not gonna be able to see this as well, but if I mimic the step like so, and I look up here, it comes out to about a 15 degree angle. It's a very comfortable step. But we don't have that kind of comfortable room. It's a tiny house, so we're going five degrees. So after you figure out your angle, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make this. This is like the ultimate thing to building uh, or making a uh, set of stairs. You need a jig. So what I like to do, I take a wide piece of scrap board and I lay it on top of my other material. Then I put one screw in, like I, I take another piece of material. I like to use the same thickness of material as my ladder for this one. This is your driving board. It's gonna be towards you as you're pushing the router. You want this nice and tight and you also want it level to your shop space so that this isn't wobbling all over the place. Then you mimic that angle, whatever that angle is. So what I like to do is I just take the scrap piece that I cut from my board and I just line that up perfectly flush and then that creates this, this angle. So then this rides square to here, you get the concept, then I go out like where there's no step and I just kind of put the jig in there, put this other piece on here, same thing. You want to leave a little cushion so that this thing can slide and move around a little bit in case your wood isn't perfectly straight. But the whole idea is that these two boards are parallel to each other. Then before I do anything else, I pile it like a hole right in the middle and then I put a screw just so that like the sharp point that, that'll really cut you up really bad is pointing through the bottom. And the reason I do that is one, it makes for a nice handle when you're pushing the router, you got something to grab on the top. 
too. When you put it on here, you just, and then it cleats itself, then it's not moving back and forth. And then you just push the router right through there. But before you go crazy and start cutting a bunch of notches, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta make a, what I call like a lead notch in my board. And that's why I leave this one a little long. So I push the router through, and then I know exactly where that router channel is. So then when I go back to my marks, which I'll show you how to do in a second, I know where to line this up with, so that all I gotta do is ride the base plate right across here. Perfect every time. But the material that I'm using is five quarter. What that means is it's five quarters or inch and a quarter nominal material, which comes out to a whopping one inch. I don't make the rules, I just follow them sometimes. I don't know why, but it's actually four, four, four quarters, one inch. But uh, when you buy the stuff from the store, you know, it's got a label like this. It says one by eight by eight. Uh, aha. Five quarter by four by eight. So it's five quarter. It actually nominally comes out to an inch. It's a good solid material because I can take a half inch out of the, out of the face of the board and I still have a half inch of a nice solid support in my steps will also be five quarter board, or one inch thick, and they'll fit right in this notch. Now, the tricky thing is, the router bit comes three quarters. Unless you want to spend a ton of money and get a one inch, which you'll probably never use. Probably the most versatile router bit I have is my three quarter router to the half inch shank. Uh, just bought this router the other day. I really like it. It's got a trigger on the handle. I think this is Bosch's newest router, or the newest one to me. Uh, my other one had a switch on the top. It's a pain in the ass, just hit the switch, the thing starts cruising. This has got two nice handles. Everything's in the base. Push it right through. It works really nice. Okay, so, <clears throat> because it's a three quarter, I gotta push the first channel, then I slide my jig to line up with the bottom half of the channel and the bottom half of my uh, guide here, my guide channel. But then what I do is I'll make a pencil mark on my top channel that I already did, but I'll make a pencil mark on the jig. I don't know if you can see that right there. Okay, so the reason I did that is it makes it a lot faster. Then I don't have to like eyeball out this side because this side kind of gets some blowout sometimes from the, the router. The next thing you're gonna want to make is you take a piece of material like this, you put your five degree on this side. I like a 12 inch rise uh, or one foot. Because that's what most ladders are. See, here's our ladder. See that? One foot rise. It's what everyone's used to. They've been making ladders. Thank you. They've been making ladders for a long time with a 12 inch rise. It's what everyone's used to, so that's what I used. So I'll cut a piece of material that's a parallelogram. That's parallelogram. Five, five, with long to short, short to long. See, parallel. This way, it's a nice guide for marking my steps. So, how do we do that? Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've marked, I already cut one, but I'm gonna tell you probably the most important thing about building a ladder. If you don't follow this, you make this mistake, don't worry, everybody makes this mistake. But it'll really piss you off. And I'll tell you about that in a second. First, I'm gonna show you how this works. So, first thing you're gonna do is you make some marks. Now. First mark, the first thing you're gonna do, that's the bottom, right? So that's our five degree angle. Now I had to take the other one back. So we allow I did this from scratch. So this one's got the angle on it already. Take your jig, line one of these sides 
up perfect at the bottom, okay? Then make your mark. How do you make your bottom mark? Take a chunk of material that's going to be your step. Hold it on that line and make a line on the bottom. Don't worry about this. This is only for the notch. So make that line. Now you've got your two lines, your two lead lines, okay? From there, it's really simple. I've already gone ahead and made those lead lines, so I'm going to just transfer this over. See what I just did? You see that? It was this way. Here's the most important thing. You have to make these angles opposite of each other so that they mirror each other when you go up the ladder. Otherwise, one side's gonna go this way and the other side's gonna go this way. If you're like me, you'll throw the piece across the room, get all pissed off and have to go back to the store because you only bought enough for what's needed. So, make sure that you flip it and that they become opposites. The other way you can do this is router one, 100%, and then you can go back and just mark it, which is what I did here. So I'm gonna just take my lead, this is my angle, remember? And make my mark, and that's our first one. Then we take our piece of material, we line that up with that, with that line we just made, and we make another line on the bottom. Now, you have your top and your bottom, so now you just well, like this, line the pencil lines up, make the bottom mark, line it up again, make the top line, make the top mark, now, technically, if you've made a jig, you don't have to do both lines, but I still like to be better taking the tire. So we got one, two, three, four. And this is our ladder. This is a bunk bed ladder, so it's pretty short. What I've noticed is every kid loves a bunk bed, but they're scared of it, so you can't make the bunk beds too tall. Alright, one, two, three, four. And we're ready to rock and roll. Take your J, put it on there. Slides nice and easy. This is a head scratcher. What do you do now? It's not in trouble because you see that? It's going the wrong way. I don't know if you can see that, but so oh shit, it's still going the wrong way. Alright, so again, don't go too fast. Because now we have to flip it. So the way we do that, really simple. I only take off one of these screws. I want to keep my distance. Take out that one for now. We do the bottom first. Okay. Now we take our jig and we want this. Roll with me. No? It's not going to roll with me. Right. Do it the hard way. Take this. Now we got our, our lead uh, edge on the other side, but what I'm realizing is, is that going to work? I'm all tripped up. I'm going to be pushing uphill. All right. We'll rebuild the jig. Hopefully you're enjoying today's instructional video. See if it's a belt from scratch. So the first thing I'll do is I'll just line this up, back that down, and then line this back up, my edge, zipper down. Okay, same thing as before, so now I'm going to flip this over, use this as my gap. Screw it down, do the whole process over. Okay. Same thing as before, now you get to see it in action. So, we'll come out here on the scrap side of things. Yeah, good. 
Okay, so we continue on. So now, now we've got our, our lead gap. Come down to the first, first one. Remember, slide it down to that other side. Make your mark. So you don't have to eyeball it anymore. Obviously, you know what to do. You gotta screw it together, you gotta put some glue. Look, I'm gonna finish this up. It's 8.30 at night, I'm tired. I want this house out of here. If you don't know about this house, this house is gonna float on the water in Lake Michigan. It's gonna be the coolest thing. We're gonna have a video about, oh man. We're gonna, we're gonna pick this up with a crane and then we're gonna put it on a big metal raft, also known as a barge. Uh, if you want more information about that and how to build barges, Got a video about that below. Anyways, it's been fun. You should subscribe if you're not subscribed. And if you are, I thank you so much for supporting this channel. Hopefully you're learning something. I know I'm learning a lot about time management and keeping these videos going, running a business and everything else. But I have so much fun doing this. And I gotta be honest with you, it's one of the happiest things that I do throughout the week. I love doing this. I know that I'm adding value. And uh, to everybody out there that watches it, thank you so much for hanging in there. 
It's been real. See you next week. <laughs>